Hi, this is Karthik Rangappa and welcome to another Varsity video. In this video, we'll talk about how to analyze an equity mutual fund. But before we do that, I would like to touch upon another concept called the rolling returns of a mutual fund. Remember, in the second video, we discussed few concepts around the personal finance math. We also touched upon how to calculate returns. Now consider this. The NAV of a mutual fund on 1st Jan 2020 is 101. On 2nd Jan, the NAV is 103. Now, on 3rd Jan 2022, the NAV of the same fund has grown to 150. If you do the math, the CAGR for the person who invested on 1st Jan 2020 is 21.86% and for the person who invested on 2nd Jan is 20.68%. So when you analyze a mutual fund and key in a specific starting and ending date, you will get a very specific return. This return is applicable only for those selected dates. This method of calculating return is also called a point-to-point -point return. The point-to-point -point return can be misleading at times because of its limitations. What you need instead is a return metric which will give you a sense of how, let's say, a 5-year return has performed over the last 10 years or let's say how a 3-year return has performed over the last 8 years. I know this may sound a little confusing but think about it this way. In the last 8 years, I can have multiple starting and ending dates which can give me a 3-year window. So when you are analyzing a fund based on returns over a period, then you need a true representation of all returns possible in that period under consideration. The metric that gives you all possible return for a selected time period is called the rolling returns. I will encourage you to read the chapter in Varsity where I have discussed the math behind rolling returns in greater detail. This is a chart of a rolling return of a mutual fund starting from 2015. And as you can see, the two-year rolling return has ranged from plus 37% to minus 1%. And if you were to invest in this fund for two years, which I would not recommend, then you should be prepared to experience a return anywhere in this range. But then a range is defined by two endpoints, which are the extreme outcomes. What you instead need is a perspective that will give you what to expect on an average basis. And you can easily assess this by taking the average of the rolling returns itself. And this is called the rolling return average. The rolling return average for the mutual fund that we just saw is about 15%. So if I were to invest in this fund for a two year period, I would expect around 15% as a return on this. But just to emphasize once again, do not invest in an equity mutual fund for short periods like one, two or three years. Always have a long-term perspective. With that, let's proceed to analyzing an equity mutual fund. When you're analyzing an equity mutual fund, it's extremely important to keep the research process simple and focus on that one thing that matters the most, the fund manager's ability to manage risk and maybe even look at the returns. For the sake of this discussion, I've picked Kotex Emerging Fund Growth. Please do not consider this as a recommendation of any sort. The first step is to run few hygiene checks, which is basically information which is good to know. And all this information is available to you in the fund's fact sheet. The first thing to understand in the fact sheet is the description of the fund itself. Take a look at the snapshot below. The AMC says the fund predominantly invests in mid-cap companies. So it is a mid-cap fund. Since it's a mid-cap fund, the benchmark is Nifty 150 Total Return Index. I look at the fund's inception date. In this case, it's March 2007. Not a very old fund, but old enough to give me at least 10 years of data points to analyze. Next, a cursory look at the portfolio quickly tells me that the fund predominantly invests in mid-cap stocks with some investments in large and small cap stocks. I know many mutual fund investors sweat over why the fund manager has invested X amount in stock A and Y amount in stock B. And they consider this as a thorough mutual fund analysis. Think about this. In my opinion, net picking on an equity mutual fund's portfolio is not mutual fund research. If you, as an investor, would be capable enough to research on stock and figure out how the composition of the portfolio should be, then you're better off investing in stocks directly. Why mutual funds? And with that, let's move to the next metric to analyze, the expense ratio. The expense ratio for both regular and direct is mentioned here. As you can see, the direct fund is far cheaper than the regular fund. And this shouldn't be surprising at all. Whenever you're checking the expense ratio, always compare the fund's expense ratio 
with the peer group. If the fund under consideration is very expensive, then you may want to just shop around and see if there are better alternatives in the market. Moving ahead, I would like to look at few other metrics which are mentioned either in the fact sheet or third-party websites like Morningstar. For the sake of this discussion, I have picked all the information from Morningstar India's website. Have a look at the risk and volatility measures of this fund. On a three-year basis, the fund's standard deviation is 24.53%. By the way, standard deviation, like I mentioned in the previous video, is a measure of risk. Higher the standard deviation, more risky is the fund, and vice versa. Now, as you can see, this particular fund's standard deviation is higher compared to the category's average, which is 24.09%. While this was on three-year basis, we also need to check how the standard deviation performs on five and 10-year basis. On the five-year basis, the fund's standard deviation is comparable with the category average, although the fund's standard deviation is slightly higher. Again, on the 10-year basis, the fund standard deviation is slightly higher. Now, on all three time frame basis, basically 3 years, 5 years and 10 years, the standard deviation of the fund is slightly higher than the category itself. At this point, I am tempted to think there could be other better mid-cap funds compared to the Kotak Emerging Fund. But let's not conclude that just yet. Moving ahead, let's look at the sharp ratio of the fund. The sharp ratio on all three time frames, basically 3, 5 and 10 years basis, indicates that the fund has performed better in terms of risk-adjusted basis compared to the category. What this indicates is that the slightly higher risk in the fund is offset by better returns. Next up is the capture ratio of the fund on a 3, 5 and 10-year basis. Again, this information is available to you on Morningstar. The capture ratios indicates that the fund is not only capturing 100% of the upside returns, but also faring better than the rest in the category. The downside capture ratios is fairly in line with the rest of the category, which is not bad. While analyzing an equity mutual fund, it's also important to visualize the risk-reward matrix. What you're seeing below is the risk-reward matrix on a five-year basis. The y-axis represents the return and the x-axis represents the risk. The further you go right on the x-axis, higher is the risk. The higher you go on the y-axis, higher is the return. The center brown plot represents the benchmark index risk and reward. So roughly the return is about 12% for a 19% risk. The yellow plot represents the category. Risk is 21% while return is 10.5%. Finally, the blue plot represents the fund itself. The fund has generated about 12.5% return against a risk of 21%. While both the fund and the category itself have lacked the benchmark, this particular fund seems to have better compared to the rest in the category. Next up in the fund analysis is a quick look at the rolling returns of the fund. You may have heard the phrase, past returns is not an indicator of future returns. While this is true, there are no better alternatives as well. Rolling returns are usually published by the fund itself and it's made available on the website. If you look at the range of rolling returns, basically the maximum and minimum, you'll realize that the fund is most consistent on a 10-year basis least consistent on three and five year basis. Now, based on our quick analysis, if I were to invest in this fund, I would do so under two conditions. Firstly, I should be prepared to deal with the volatility in this fund. Second, if at all I'm investing, I wouldn't invest for a period less than 10 years in this fund. By the way, in our analysis of this mutual fund, we never looked at the star rating of this fund, which is usually published by many third-party service providers. Investing based on just the star rating is a useless affair. The decision to invest in a mutual fund and therefore include that fund in your portfolio should not stem solely from the fact that the fund is good. Meaning, just because a fund is very good, I'll not go ahead and invest in it. The decision to invest in the mutual fund should come from the objective of your portfolio. Remember, an objective serves a financial goal. For example, if my financial goal is to save up for an emergency corpus, then there is no way I'll include a mid-cap or a small-cap fund in that particular portfolio. So it does not matter how good the fund is, there is no question of investing in that fund if it doesn't align with my financial goal. I hope you found this video useful. Do comment and let me know if you have any queries. In the next video, we will talk about analyzing a debt fund. See you guys soon.